Hello everyone, my name is Kay Roberts Palmer from Blue Bee Garden Design and Save Our Citrus and Brimbank Libraries have invited me here today to talk to you all about composting. But just before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're virtually meeting on today and their elders past, present and emerging. All right, so Australia has a problem with edible waste. At the moment, 1.3 million tonnes of edible waste, this is food scraps, go into our landfills. Now, they create problems like leachate, which is a toxic liquid, which goes into our waterways and poisons our fish. It also produces methane, which is a greenhouse gas, and carbon dioxide. And it's the third most polluting thing that we can do um, as part of our human activities on the planet. So it's a real problem for us, but also it's a bit of a tragedy because um, edible waste is actually a resource for our gardens. We can use it to improve our soils, help grow our veggies and our plants. We just have to compost it. Okay, so um, when you compost, you create a thing called humus. Humus is when it's all broken down. I just want to show you, I've got some here. See how black it is? It's rich, it's black. I add this to my soil, it conditions my soil. It really adds structure to it, lots of organic matter, lots of nutrients. Not to be confused with hummus, which is what you put on your crackers and have at picnics, okay? So humus. All right. So you may be thinking, well, well what kind of things can I add to start off my compost? So there's this idea of greens and browns. So if I take the greens first, so greens are quite dynamic. We've got things like the veggie scraps, coffee grounds, flowers, leaves, clippings, tea bags, uh, feathers, seaweed. And just to show you, uh, I've got a friend who loves his Greek yogurt and he gave me these wonderful tubs. They have lids on them. Um, and in here I've got uh, pear, banana skin, a bit of orange, a bit of tea bags. I've got some tissues. Uh, so I'm just collecting that in the kitchen and I'm going to take that out and put that into my compost. So there's kind of like your, that's your greens. Then you have your browns. So your browns are carbon and they add structure to your compost. So things you get with the browns, you've got your dried leaves, your grass, shredded newspaper, straw and sticks dust and napkins, eggshells and cardboard, hair nail clippings, yes you can add hair nail clippings and pet hair as well, pine needles, organic string, rope, wool and ashes. And particularly at the moment being autumn, um, it's a good thing to collect, you know I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of leaves here. Um, this is perfect carbon that I can add to my compost uh, and it will break down. I mean, in the natural world, these sorts of things in the forest, they fall to the ground, they're broken down by the, the fungi, and then they return to the plants. We're doing a similar thing with using compost. So gather up all your autumn leaves and compost them. Um, the only thing I would say, if you've had any um, pest issues, like with borer or you've had a bit of leaf curl, um, you might want to avoid those leaves, but any other leaves that you have, you know, please compost them and uh, then they can add back into your garden. So yeah, so if we go back to the greens and browns. All right, so we're, it's like we're making a cake, okay? A, a, a compost cake. So basically you need one handful of greens to two handfuls of browns. You don't want to add in, if you add in too much greens, what you'll find is you'll get a smelly compost. You know, the amount of times I go peering into people's compost bins and they've got flies and it smells, it's because they've got too much of this. So if you have too many greens, particularly your veggie scraps, you need to add your browns. You need to, and also shred it up, like shred up your newspapers cut up you know the eggshells and hair and make sure it's small pieces it actually goes for both you need to mix them together all right so if it's smelly add some browns that will really help your compost all right so now you kind of know some of the things that you can include in your compost you might be thinking well i want to start off i want to do it now the great thing about composting is it's scalable 
so regardless of whether you have a big garden or a, a small backyard you can find a type of compost pile that can suit you okay so the first one I'm going to show you is this one here this is um, so it's quite wide and low that's going to save your back that's going to be quite good for your back now you can also open up the little gate below and the compost will come out of there it's easy to get hold of so make sure that you consider that sort of thing and it's all contained in there some people put wire under their compost bin to help control mice and rats if that's a problem in your area now with all those autumn leaves that I was showing you if I had a huge pile I could actually you know put some chicken wire around uh, the the leaves and let them compost down that way that would be quite an easy thing to do but it would be quite slow as well because that that's carbon that doesn't have any greens in it and this one here they've just sort of put some sticks together and let the sort of the the leaves and the the veggie scraps sort of break down now I should mention uh, with these types of ways of composting there's aerobic and anaerobic so aerobic is in the presence of oxygen so what happens is the microbes come along and they're really hungry and they chew all your veggie scraps and as they do they produce a whole lot of heat compost piles can get up to 50 degrees all right the hotter it gets the better because it means that you can be killing all the weed seeds and pathogens in your compost pile in order to get that heat you need to be turning your compost because they need the oxygen all right it's a bit like us if we have a nice meal we get quite hot after a nice meal the other type of composting is anaerobic that is in the absence of oxygen it's a colder process and it takes longer and there are different types of microbes that are involved in it um, and it's a bit like if we have a look here this is a bit of a set and forget kind of composting this would be more sort of uh, potentially anaerobic um, than this one which if you stir it is aerobic all right so the other types of composting that you can do uh, so we'll talk about this one first this is a direct dig this is literally we dig a hole in the garden and you put your compost in all right you make sure it's quite a deep hole and then you cover it over with your soil and if you do that within two weeks you can have compost so basically it will have been taken back into the soil by the earthworms and other microbes um, and it's a really quick easy way to get you know those veggie scraps directly into your soil you do have to watch out if you have any mice around that sort of thing that you're digging your holes deep enough um, but I actually practice this one I find it works really well um, I do have a worm farm but I use this system and it's fine the other way is to have two going so as you can see this one with the vegetables that's just starting off okay and then over time it's breaking down and you're getting the second one I'll just bring it a bit closer so you're getting the second one so it's going brown it's breaking down you've got some lovely compost happening there so it can be good to have you know one starting one processing and one finishing that sort of thing in your garden the only thing with this is it's quite open um, so if you have any fly issues it can be hard to control and again if you have any mice issues or any other pest issues it can be hard to control um, so really you need to think about what your situation is now for those people that have very small gardens or perhaps you know live in apartments and just don't have a lot of space another great one that's come out is tumblers all right so the way tumblers work again you have the the two sort of components here um, compartments so the first one is your veggie scraps and the second one is already starting to break down and you turn it you turn it like this and you get the oxygen in there and it breaks down really really quickly um, and you, as you can see it's quite neat so if you only have a little courtyard or something you can be processing your compost your veggie scraps that way however if you've got a big family it might be a bit tricky because you can only fit so much um, in your compost but you you know as soon as it started compost you should empty out this one and start again 
all right but for people with bad backs it's great because it's just turning like that it's not going to hurt your back because some of these other compost piles that i showed you before you've got to consider you know how much bending you're doing you shouldn't have a really narrow compost bin right you want it nice and wide so you can get to it and you can turn it now there are things on the market that are like screw like turners that you can put into your compost pile and turn them rather than forking it up with a big fork but you need to have a look at your space and decide what composting works for you now if you're a bit of a carnivore or you're you know you're really into your dairy kind of products you might want to consider bukashi now the interesting thing about bukashi is it's a fermentation process of composting so it works in the absence of oxygen that i was talking about before so you put in your meat and veg um your meat sorry your meat dairy those sorts of products in there you can put veg as well really um, but you seal it we put some bran fermented bran on top and you seal it with a lid um, and it's usually sort of in the kitchen and then over a week or so it actually pickles it, it ferments it and then what you can do is tip that into a hole in your garden and it just breaks down there's no greenhouse gases and it's a fantastic way of dealing with you know the the meat and dairy products that sometimes we struggle with we don't know quite what to do with so bokashi now you have to buy those as a kit as well so you get the fermented bran you get the container um, there's instructions but um, now a lot of councils give discounts so please check with Brimbag um, you know they're really keen for you to be composting and they do have um, sort of incentives and those sorts of things so just contact council to contact Brimbag and see what they have on that all right so now we're going to play a little bit of a can i put this in my bin now i've i've talked a little bit about some of the things you include in your compost bin but there are obviously um these common questions that come up for people around composting so let's go through them all right so onion scraps onion scraps yes you can you chop them up and you can put them in but in small doses wood chips and sawdust maybe maybe it depends on where it's come from if it's treated wood then i'd probably avoid it but if it's natural wood that's fine um, diseased leaves like black spot you know black spot on your roses no because potentially you could spread that through your garden potato peelings yes you can but um if your compost doesn't get hot enough it might germinate and then you've got potatoes but that might be okay for you all right weeds weeds no you want to avoid weeds because you know you end up spreading them in the garden which isn't good nuts yes you can except for walnuts the reason why you can't put walnuts in is because they have an inhibitor a chemical inhibitor um, which weakens the growth of other plants which is quite interesting waxed paper wax paper yes you can again break it up rhubarb leaves rhubarb leaves and i have one here just to show you all look how massive that is now a lot of people go oh no maybe not rhubarb leaves but that's only you don't want to eat them they're poisonous if you eat them but in a compost pile they're fantastic so you can definitely use them stale bread and pasta well that's something you could use in the bokashi system but um look i would avoid it mostly for your compost except if you're putting it in really small pieces and you mix it through dog and cat poo no don't put that in your compost because it will spread the pathogens around your garden and it's really not a good thing to have in your compost pile okay so one other thing i wanted to show you about composting is this this is comfrey comfrey is a herb you don't eat it what you do it's a soil conditioner it actually has nitrogen uh, potassium and phosphorus in it which is mpk which is the um, complete elemental elementary um, nutrients that your soil needs if you chop this up and you add it to your compost it will help break down your compost quicker and add more nutrients to your soil so it's a fantastic thing to have um, in your compost 
All right. Okay. So, look, that's just a quick guide to composting. I'm going to be online now. Uh, so if you have any questions about anything I've spoken about, um, please put your comments and questions into the comments section. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and next week we're going to be talking about worm farms and I'm so excited I'm going to be showing you my worm farm. It's going to be great. So stay tuned next week for that. But um, stay, stay safe and thank you so much for watching this composting video. I've been Kay Roberts Palmer from Blue Bee Garden Design and Save Our Citrus and take care. Bye.